Hi, I'm Sean Warren with SeanWarrenFineArt.com and today I'm going to talk about overcoming fear of failure. It's a cool rainy May day here in Denver and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to overcome failure and how to get past the fear of failure. First of all, I want to tell you about what happened yesterday. I've been preparing to do a series, a YouTube series, called Let's Paint University. And w the first of the series is a color theory class. And I started to do the taping yesterday. I taped a whole lesson on doing the, a little color chart, and I'll show you that later. But I did the whole lesson and discovered that I never hit the record button. So that was like my big error yesterday. And so today, instead of going through all that again, I thought I'd do a video on how to overcome failure. And I'm going to show you another one of my failures right here. This painting, this is the second time I've done this painting. And the first time I did it, I was actually very happy with it, and I had someone who wanted to buy it. Actually, I had two or three people that wanted to buy it. And I got some input from a painter friend that I know. And she has a lot more painting experience than I do, and I really respect her. And she made some suggestions to me that I should take on the painting. And so I went ahead and I took her suggestions, and I changed the painting, and I ruined it. I overworked it, and part of the things, part of the thing that I really liked in the painting, um, like was this open space where you can see the blue sky through here. I really liked that about the painting, but by the time I had taken her suggestions, I totally ruined that. So I stripped the canvas down. It was an oil painting. Um, on an oil painting, it's, it's a little more difficult just to gesso it over and redo it. You have to use um, oil paint instead of gesso. And I buy my canvas in bulk, so, and it's easy enough for me to stretch my own frame. So I just pulled the, frame, or pulled the canvas off the frame and did it over. This is what you're looking at now. I figured, well, you know, I have these people that want to buy this painting, and um, none of them live in state, so I'm going to have to ship it. You know, no matter how I do it, I'm going to have to ship it to them. This thing is really big to ship, and it's going to take six months for it to dry so I can put it in the mail to ship it. So I thought, well, what if I just do this in acrylic? I think it looked just as beautiful in acrylic. There's not a lot of blending except for the background, which I ended up doing this background in airbrush. So I went ahead and did it in acrylic. It's not quite finished, but I, it doesn't look as beautiful. And the oil paint just has a quality to it that's really beautiful. It's got some translucency, and it just has a different property. Dif you know, it just looks different. And this looks real flat to me, and I just wasn't happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward. I wasn't afraid to put the paint on the canvas, and each one of these I learned something. The first one I learned to trust your instinct, and if it's something you like, go ahead and go for it and do it your way. Um, the person that gives you suggestions doesn't have the vision that you have of what it's supposed to look like. They don't have that vision. The lady that I was talking to uh, was more of a realistic painter, and I really want this to look more like an abstract painting, so it's not meant to look real realistic. But she had in her mind this other way it was supposed to look. And so it's good to get feedback, but I caution you when you get feedback, think about it. Is that what you want of it? Or is that what somebody else wants of it? Especially if, it's, if you have a customer and they want to buy it and they love it, don't make changes to it. Go ahead and go with your gut instinct. So anyway. The second one, of course, I explained that to you. So I'm going to gesso this over. I'm going to move past this. And I'm not afraid to do it. It's been sitting in my studio for six months or so on my wall. And I look at it every day. And I think, that's got to go. So I'm just going to not worry about it. I'm going to go past it and a gesso over this. And I'm going to do it again in oil. This time I have some better ideas about it. I, I've kind of looked at some other paintings and some other landscape photographs, and I've gotten some new ideas for it. So it's basically going to be the same kind of a painting. This is called Cathedral Aspens. 
So it'll still have that part where you, it looks like you're looking up from the ground, but I have some other ideas to make it better. So I think even with a big painting like this, if you learn something from it, if you learn something from your mistakes, and you're able to make your work better because of it, then it's worth it. You didn't waste, I didn't waste paint on this, I didn't waste time on it, I learned something from it. So it's not a waste at all. The other thing that I deal with sometimes, and I know other people deal with, is when you're working on a painting, you just are afraid, sometimes even to put the first stroke on it. You have this white canvas, which can be really intimidating, and you're afraid to mess it up. Or you get to a, a certain place on the painting and you really like it, but it's not finished. And you just don't want to mess it up. Kind of like this brand new apron. I have this brand new apron and I didn't even want to wipe my paint on it because I didn't want to mess my apron up. And I thought, well, that's stupid. That's what it's there for. So anyway, uh, what I was talking about is um, the fear of painting itself. You got to realize it's just paint. This isn't life. You can, you can fix the, there's a lot of different ways you can fix the paint if you mess it up. With oil paint, you can just wipe it off. With acrylic paint, you can let it dry and you can paint over it. So really, you shouldn't be afraid to go ahead and just do it. And the same applies in life. There's things in life that we mess up at, we, make fa we have failures and we make mistakes. Sometimes it, we can't redo it. Sometimes it's too late and the damage is already done. Um, but there's other times we can make it right. And even if we can't make it right, if we learn some, from some, uh, if we learn from that experience, then it's still a good thing. I read somewhere that our life is a tapestry and it's made up of all different kinds of threads. Dark threads, light threads, bright threads, shiny threads, dull threads. But you can't just have the beautiful threads. In a ta tapestry, you have to have contrast. Same as in a painting. You know, you, you can't see the beautiful sky on this. You couldn't see the beautiful blue sky unless I had some of that beautiful orange to contrast with it. So in our lives, there have to be good experiences and bad experiences. And the bad experiences help us to appreciate the good ones. And the good ones are there to encourage us. So don't let someone, don't let someone stop you from painting. Don't let yourself stop you from painting. Or anything else in life that you really want to do. If there's something you really want to do, you just have to go out and do it. You can't be afraid. And I, I heard it said that it's always too soon to give up. No matter how many times you try, if it's really something that is really important to you and you want to do, it's never too soon. Oh, it's always too soon to give up. It's always too soon. Keep trying. When I started college, I was 38 years old, and it took me, it took me about eight years. I was going part-time for the first four years, and then I was going full-time plus for the last four years. And some people can say, well, why would you want to go to college that late in life? Well, because it was something that was important to me. I always felt like because I got married young and because I, I, you know, as a young couple, a young military couple, we couldn't really afford for me to stop working and go to college. And it wasn't until I was laid off my job in 2001. And yeah, that was a negative experience. I had worked there for seven, seven or eight years and they closed our department. They closed actually a whole, a whole section of the company that I was working for got closed. And so I lost my job, and I did get, I got six months of severance pay, and then I ended up with, I think, a year of unemployment altogether. 
and that's when I decided to go to college because I'd always wanted to go to college, but I never had the opportunity. So I started my own business. Um, I'm a graphic designer professionally. So I started my own business, and I, that was the year I also started homeschooling my son. He was in fifth grade. And where we live, sixth grade is middle school, and I didn't feel like he was ready, and he didn't feel like he was ready to go to middle school. So I homeschooled him that year as I started college. And that was the best, one of the best decisions I ever made was to go to college. So I kept working as I went to college, and, and it, was, it was hard. My husband had a really bad motorcycle accident uh, my junior year of college, I think. And he was off work for about a year. Um, but I was still able to keep going and, and finish my college up in 2008. OK, I'm going to let this dry a little bit. And we'll come back and put a second coat on. So I'll see you, I'll see you in a few minutes, OK? All righty, I let this dry a little bit. And I actually took a blow dryer to it. Unfortunately, I sucked my hair up in the blow dryer. So I think that one's pretty much toast. Luckily, I have five more blow dryers, so no worries. So just putting the second coat. This will take a few coats um, to cover. I just wanted to show you, though, that with acrylic paint, you can just sew it over. And it is bumpy. It has texture, but I don't really mind that because the painting I'm doing is going to be bumpy and have texture anyway. So I'm going to basically do the same, kind of the same, it'll be the same painting. I just have some better ideas on what to do with the trees and the leaves and maybe use some different colors, like some purples and different colors in the trees themselves. So anyway, yeah, that's where I'm at. So what were we talking about? We were talking about overcoming failure and not being discouraged, not letting people discourage you. You know, in, with artwork, it's really subjective. So don't be worried. Don't be concerned if somebody doesn't like your art. That just may not be the style of art that they like. Don't be discouraged if, um, you know, you submit your art to a, a show or a gallery and, and it doesn't it doesn't get chosen. If you're going to put your art in a gallery, be sure that you do your research first and find out what kind of art they like. If you're going to put it in a show, do the same thing. Make sure that um, your art has context in the venue that you're displaying it. OK, I need to mix up a little more paint here. I am adding a little bit of water with this. And you can see it's a little transparent. Maybe I'll try to put some on without putting water on it. This stuff is pretty thick, though. I'm using Liquitex Basics Gesso. So let's see how it works. Whoa! That was almost a big mistake. No worries. Mistakes are good. So this will definitely cover a little faster. So anyway, as I was saying, there's a lot of artists that work that uh, is not appreciated during their lifetimes. Van Gogh is one, for instance. I think Van Gogh only sold one painting his entire lifetime. But he had a lot of support from his family. He was, he was very close to his brother. And his brother, you know, supported him in his artwork. So, and, you know, sometimes I think Van Gogh was just a little bit of ahead of his time. He was painting during a time where Impressionism was still really popular. And he was kind of taking a step in a different direction. So sometimes your work is just not appreciated because it's not mainstream. Also, don't do it for other people, you know, just do it for yourself. If you like it, what difference does it make? Unless you're a professional artist and you're doing commissions for someone, just do what you like. So 
sometimes, well not sometimes, a lot of times during my painting parties, I have people, they're brand new painters. You know, they really hardly picked up a brush in their life before. And they're not, they're not happy with, you know, the way their painting looks, or they're comparing it to other people in the class. And you have to realize, you know, how do, what do you expect? You've never picked up a paintbrush before. It's not going to look beautiful the first time, maybe. It might, but it might not. And a painting party is a place also to have fun. It, it's not a place where we're going to really produce a masterpiece. I mean, let's be honest. You know, at a painting party, we have two hours, and we're all basically doing the same painting. And, you know, it's not the same as having days to work on something when you're at home and you're able to concentrate on it. It's more of a social thing. You know, it's like bowling or something, you know. It's just a good way to relax and go out for the evening and do something fun. So, while I'm doing this, I also wanted to tell you a little bit about the Let's Paint University classes. So I'm really excited about these. Um, the one that we're starting will be a color theory series. And we're going to do um, some exercises that will teach you how to mix paint out of basic colors. So you don't have to buy a whole mess of colors. And you'll know how, how to get different colors. You know, So you don't have to necessarily buy an olive green or a brown. I'll teach you how to make it out of, you know, three or four colors. So we'll be doing that. We'll be kind of learning the properties of colors. You know, all colors have a warm and a cool version. And I'll be showing you how to make a color warm or cool, how to create color harmony um, in, your, in your paintings. We'll be learning about um, grayscales, about values about composition, what makes good composition in a painting, um, elements of design, like shape, color, uh, repetition. There's a lot of different things that you can put into your painting that will make them stronger, stronger paintings. So we'll be learning about some of that. All right. This this uh, unwatered down gesso is pretty thick. I am dipping my brush in it as I'm going because I think it's just a little too hard to spread. And I may go ahead and do some sanding in between. I'm not going to torture you by making you watch me do the whole thing, but I just wanted to show you, um, you know, how you can deal with your mistakes and don't be afraid of them. You can always paint over them. You can always pull it off the frame and throw it away and start over with a brand new one. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you'll be encouraged and don't be afraid to try something new. Don't be afraid, you know, to put something on the, on the, on the canvas. Just go ahead and do it. And the same thing in life. Don't be afraid to go and do something that you really want to do. Just go out and do it. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye.